Hello my friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Olivia or Liv if you are new here and today we are going to be doing a good old fashioned book haul. I feel like it has been quite some time since I have done just a good sit down book haul with you guys. Most of these books I've been accumulating since August. Ever since the end of July hit, I pretty much told myself I'm not allowed to buy books unless I'm planning to put them in a fall book haul or unless they're fall related or I plan to read them by the end of the year. And because of that rule I had for myself, I don't know how many books I have here, but it is quite a lot. There are some from pretty much every single genre. If you've been around here long enough, you know I read quite a variety of things, so there will hopefully be something here for everyone. There's a mix of old books and new releases, but most of these I feel like fit a fall theme. We've got a lot of books here and I've got a lot to catch you up on. So we're going to talk about these books by genre. I have pretty much every genre. Of course, we've got some horror, some mystery thrillers. We have young adult fantasy, which is what I think I'm going to start with. So let's just go ahead and dive right in. So the first book I'm going to talk about is actually my Patreon book club pick for the month of September. I think it's going to be the perfect transitional fall book. That is The Library of Shadows by Rachel Moore. This is a fun young adult ghosty rom-com that also has themes of dark academia. Our main character's father goes missing and so she's on the hunt to find her father and along the way meets a ghost. I don't know what else happens but it sounds like the perfect fall vibe and it just sounds fun and light and just something that you can easily fly through and I'm all about trying a debut author and I actually really love this cover. I think it's giving me Annie LaRue vibes. Don't know if that will be any part of the story but it's definitely making me think of that book. If it's anything like that though I'm definitely gonna love this one. The next book is one that I can definitely say Bookstagram made me do it because I didn't love the other book that I read by this author but that is Bring Me Your Midnight by Rachel Griffin. I've heard this one is like the perfect transitional book because it takes place on the coast. There's witches. It's young adult fantasy. Basically anything young adult fantasy you guys know that I will try and pick up. So I'm definitely hoping I have better luck with this book than I did her other one. I could be completely wrong but because the sea is such a big theme in this book. There might actually be pirates and if there is I have a feeling that's gonna make me love this one even more. I also have House of Roots and Ruin by Erin A. Craig. You guys know how much I love House of Salt and Sorrow. That is one book that I will constantly recommend even if it's not spooky season but I love that book. It's one of my top favorite young adult books of all time as well as this author. She is just amazing. This is technically the second book but I've also heard you can read it as a standalone. It is quite a chunky boy though and I know this does follow one of the sisters from the first book. I would recommend reading the first one and I have heard that this is pretty gory but if it is anything like the first one, which I know it will be, I am just going to give this one a big five stars. I can already tell. I mean this book is stunning. The end pages and everything is just perfection. Next I have A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. I think she also wrote Juniper and Thorn and the Wolfsmen, I believe. It's Dark Academia. Our main character, I believe, enters a competition to revamp or like redesign an author's estate or something. All I know is that my friend Brittany, who works at Barnes and Noble, said that she read this three times before it even came out and she's even in the acknowledgments, which is pretty cool. I love the author's vibe just in general. Her Instagram is stunning. So I'm hoping this could possibly be a top favorite favorite of the year for me. The next two books were kindly sent to me by Rebecca who's a patron and a subscriber and a friend here so thank you so much Rebecca. She sent me Sisters of Sword and Song by none other than the Queen Rebecca Ross. Oh my goodness I love this cover. I thought about buying it for myself so many times. I really want to own all of Rebecca Ross's books because I loved Divine Rivals so much. This one looks like it has to do with two sisters. One of them goes off to a war. She comes back early and she's suddenly charged with murder. I don't know why or who the person was that was murdered but I love a good sister dynamic. I believe this one is a standalone. I love a good sister dynamic. I have a couple sisters of my own and 
and I just love that theme in a book so this is hopefully going to be another five stars for me. The next book that I want to talk about I've actually seen this around every single year that fall time comes and I think this was published back in 2017 so it's definitely not a new book or a new series but it is called The Black Witch, The Black Witch Chronicles. I have seen a couple of my patrons actually say they were reading this. It's huge but it sounds phenomenal but all I saw on the back here was there was an apothecary and I was like you know what say no more. This has so many reviews on Goodreads and they all seem really good like everybody loves this series. I'm definitely going out on a whim here just picking this one up. I've never heard of this author before but if you guys have read it definitely let me know. This one hopefully will be nothing short of amazing. This next book I have seen around a ton lately. It's never been on my radar. A couple of my friends talked me into getting it because it's supposed to be similar to Sarah J Mass. That is Twin Crowns by Catherine Doyle and Catherine Weber. This sounds so good. I mean Sarah J Mass even blurbed it on the cover so how could you go wrong with that? Ren Greenrock has always known that one day she'd steal her sister's place on the throne. Trained from birth to return to the palace and avenge her parents murder, she'll do anything to become queen and protect the community of witches who raised her. It sounds like Throne of Glass because she's kind of going into assassin mode but then there's also witches apparently so sign me up I am ready to read this one right now. Next I have a book that I actually heard from my friend Darling Desi. We were talking one day she showed me the cover of this and I was like okay I don't care what it's about I need it it's dark academia. That is Modern Divination by Isabel Agajanian. I don't know if I pronounced that right. I actually think this is self-published which is super cool. I love the art style of this cover. It sounds incredible. Aurelie Schwartz has spent 23 years maintaining the equilibrium between her carefully curated human life and the magical one that she endures in secret. With a devoted best friend and top marks at a prestigious university, she has everything one could possibly want neatly within her grasp. Except her gift of green magic has begun to fade, and if that wasn't enough to upset the balance of her life, a fateful run-in with another power-hungry witch with a penchant for stolen magic has threatened to bring it all to ruin. Cast into an unexpected alliance with her dreadfully arrogant classmate, Aurelia goes into hiding among a peculiar family of witches, where she discovers that the secret to their safety requires breaking rules she has followed all her life. Make no promises, tell no one what you are, and never stay the night. That sounds incredible, so interesting. I feel like this could either turn into a romance or just a really good friendship between these two, so I'm very excited about this one. My next deck of books is all adult fantasy, which I'm very happy about. I've actually been really trying hard to get into adult fantasy, but I've had a hard time finding something that I have really loved. Until recently, I have found a couple authors that I think I could really get into, but this first one I want to talk about I've never seen anywhere else. I found it for like three or five dollars at my local book thrift store and I'm very excited about it because it sounds super cozy. This one is Unnatural Magic by C.M. Wagoner. I love this cover. This is what initially drew me in. This is such a stunning book and I love the color palette but let me just say when I saw that there is a human and a troll that develop a friendship, that's all I needed to know. Like, I don't even care what the heck this book is about. A brilliant and terrifyingly fun debut brings an enchanting new voice to fantasy. There's also something to do with an academy, but there are mysterious murders of trolls, and so I think that's how our main character gets involved with another troll and they become friends. I'm all about trying to find different books that people haven't read before, but if you have read this one and it's Good. please reassure me that it's worth picking up. Next we have Masters of Death by Olivia Blake. I am currently still in the middle of Atlas 6. That is the first book I've ever read by this author and I'm really loving it. I especially love the writing. This one actually I think has a haunted estate. There's a vampire, there is like an exorcist, there's a ghost, there's a love-stricken reaper. They are basically just trying to rid this house 
of anything evil, I think. But the end pages are absolutely stunning and I love the cover. So this is kind of a cover buy for me, but I also keep seeing this everywhere. But this one just sounds amazing. Obviously for this time of year, it sounds like an interesting concept and a bunch of very unique characters. Next is a book that I never thought I would buy. To be completely honest with you, I'm shocked that I'm holding it right now, but we're gonna give it a shot. That is Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. And if you've been around here long enough, you know that Mistborn wasn't quite my jam. I did really love Skyward though. So this could be the book that potentially is the tiebreaker to see if I wanna continue on with any more Brandon Sanderson books. This one has been pitched to me as like a Princess Bride retelling, but with pirates. And I believe he also wrote this for his wife, which I think is so sweet. The end page is stunning. I just needed to own this book. And the greens in this cover are giving me so many autumnal vibes. So I'm very happy to own this and hopefully I'm happy about it in the end. Another author that I've only read one book from, she's been compared to Sarah J Maas. She's huge in the romanticy kind of community right now. I read Serpent of Wings of Night earlier this year. Absolutely fell in love, could not put it down. It's been so long since I found a book that really made me love fantasy again. So I knew that I had to get Slang the Vampire Conqueror. I love this cover. They actually sell her books in Barnes & Noble now. Kendall got this for me, so thank you, Kendall. But I know nothing about this book, you guys. Absolutely nothing. I just know that I'm a huge fan of this author. I need to own, buy, read everything that this author has ever written. So this kind of just adds to my collection at this point. The next book that I got through Book of the Month, I think this was actually in June. Yeah, this was in June, but I've purposefully kept it up until fall because I feel like it's going to be the perfect fall read. That is Inkblood Sister Scribe by Emma Tor. I think is how you pronounce her name. I love this cover. The purple is so cool. And I love that there's a pen that kind of goes into a tree. I just, uh, I love a good design. You guys know this. But the inside says two estranged half-sisters tasked with guarding their family's library of magical books must work together to unravel a deadly secret at the heart of their collection. A tale of familial loyalty and betrayal and the pursuit of magic and power. Right there, you've got sisters, you've got books, you've got magic, you've got a library, you've got secrets. I mean, there is so much potential in this book for me to give it a five star. So I'm hoping to fit this maybe into my November TBR. My next book of the month pick was from July and I honestly didn't know what to choose because I don't know, the month just wasn't the greatest, but I do know that this author has been highly spoken of so many times by so many people. That is Immortal Longings by Chloe Gong. It's piqued my interest mainly because this is her first adult book, but it is based on Shakespeare's Antony and Cleopatra, which I have not read in a long time. But there's a deadly game, there's romance, there's fiery collisions of power plays. It just sounds really high stakes. But again, I'm just trying to add to my adult fantasy collection and just really find that one author that I love for adult books. Next, we're going to talk about some young adult horror, which I I feel it could really be my jam because sometimes adult horror is a little bit too much for me. I was sent this book by the publisher, so I think I'm going to give it a shot. That is Holly Horror, which looks really freaking creepy. I don't know what all is going on in this cover. I love a good haunted house book that is like my favorite horror genre or trope or whatever in these types of books. I'm gonna see how this one goes. It's pretty small, so I feel like I could get through it fairly quick, but I will keep you guys updated on my thoughts. The next book is by Kate Alice Marshall called The Narrow. I love Kate Alice Marshall, but unfortunately didn't exactly love her previous young adult book. I really want to love every single book that she's written, but this one I think takes place at a boarding school, and the back just says whatever you do, don't let the water in. Sounds really creepy, sounds really scary. I also always just love her covers. Like, this just gives me so many Dark Academia vibes. It's been a while since I've read one of her books. Books, so I'm hoping to finally dive into this one soon. This next book I just picked up recently and I have not seen a lot of people talk about it so I don't know if that's gonna end up being a good thing or a bad thing but we're gonna find out together. That is Go Hunt Me by Kelly Devos. Devos. It says good girls bite back. The only thing I know about this book is it takes place at the castle that inspired Bram Stoker's Dracula. There are several different 
different characters. It looks like we have about seven different people in this book that are all different parts of this film crew and they are just trying to make an epic film as high schoolers and some crazy things go down. So I feel like this could really be a good gothic vibe. Maybe? Maybe some vampires come into play? Who knows? But I'm totally here for it. The next three books I'm going to talk about together because they are by the same author who has quickly become one of my favorites this year. That is none other than Rachel Harrison. Black Sheep recently just came out. I'm super excited to get to this one. I know it's going to take a direction that I don't expect, so I'm going to be picking this one up sooner rather than later. I also recently just read The Return, which is her debut book, and I think I liked it more than Cackle. Cackle, which I read last year, it had the perfect combination of horror, but there was also a really good friendship dynamic. There was also kind of like a haunted hotel vibe, which was really extra creepy, and I really love that about this book. And then I also have Such Sharp Teeth, which I've heard may be her most horror-ish book so far, but this one, I don't know what to expect. I just know it's about werewolves, and I'm hoping I love it, but we shall see. There's definitely mixed reviews about this one. So I'm very happy to now be the proud owner of all of her books. I cannot wait to read the other two this fall. I just know it's going to be a great time. If you've never picked up her books before, she definitely has a very unique voice, but I feel like this is almost a really good segue to get into horror because it's not extremely horror-ish. It's just hard to describe. Anyways, I'm very excited to dive into these. These next books are ones that are kind of romance-y. I think there's a romance element in all of these, but they're also more contemporary. Some of them have a little bit of horror, but these are just books that kind of have a sprinkle of everything in them. But we're going to start us off with Hex Education by Maureen Kilmer. I don't know how to describe her because last year I read Suburban Hell and there was definitely some gory, like intense horror moments, but I loved the friendship dynamic. I kind of compare it to my best friend's exorcism, but in a more mature way because they're all moms. But in this one we have three college friends who I think accidentally set a school on fire and then 20 years later they come back together not exactly sure why not exactly sure what goes down but if it's anything like suburban hell because that one was an instant five stars for me I know I'm gonna enjoy this one because she's pretty much like an auto buy author for me this next book I cannot wait to finally pick up and read I think it was a patreon book club voting choice at one point but I don't think anyone voted for it I can't remember if it was from the month of September but regardless, I'm going to be reading this as soon as possible. That is the unfortunate side effects of Heartbreak and Magic. For fans of Practical Magic and Gilmore Girls, that's literally all I'm going to tell you. If you like either one of those things, if you like both of those things, I feel like I can already recommend picking this one up, even though I haven't read it for myself, because the author is such a sweet girl. I highly recommend also checking out her Instagram. Haven't even read her book. Don't even care. I'm obsessed with her. As far as I know, this does classify as adult cozy fantasy, so if you're into that, definitely check this one out. The next book that I was so kindly sent by the publisher is What Became of Magic by Paige Crutcher. I know she wrote The Orphan Witch, and I think she's written a couple other books as well, but I've never read any. This one just caught my attention because the cover looks so whimsical and magical, but I'm just going to read you the back here. It says, Aline Weir, a witch who can talk to ghosts, has kept her talents hidden ever since a disastrous middle school slumber party. Choosing to be invisible and use her powers in secret to help lost souls reunite with the keys to send them home. All the while, she finds Soulless in a bookstore and the three mysterious women who run it, until Aline discovers the book of mischief and her powers are enhanced. We have those three mysterious women that run the shop and it just sounds like practical magic to me. So I am very curious about this one. It sounds like the writing is going to be super fun. This one recently just came out, so go get it for yourself if you are into those cozy magical witch vibes. This next book I picked up for two reasons. One, I see it around all the time. Two, I think this is the first time that I've ever picked up a book just because of the blurb on the front, and that is Paybacks a Witch by Lana Harper. It says a sexy, funny, charming romp of a novel that scratches that witchy autumnal itch just right. The way that this sentence was written, just yes. Everything about this 
yes i love the cover it says it's more of like a rom-com but this just sounds like a good palette cleanser from all of those heavier horror books that i'm probably going to be reading or those long fantasy books so i'm hoping this one will be a really fun time next i do have a fun rom-com type of book by one of my favorite authors courtney walsh that is can't help falling a sweet romantic comedy obviously i don't know much about this i'm seeing pumpkin cupcakes i am seeing my best friend's brother. I think I'm seeing a friendship to lovers romance. If it's got those autumnal vibes I'm looking for in a sweet fun romance, I'm definitely going to be reading this one. So thank you Courtney Walsh for sending me a copy of your book. Next we have The Invisible Hour by Alice Hoffman. I read Practical Magic and I actually gave it two stars back in the day in like 2018. I've never read one of her books since but because this one is so small and it looks so autumnal I decided to get this as one of my book of the month choices. A novel about a fierce heroine whose life is saved by a book and its author even though they live hundreds of years apart. So if we've got some time traveling going on I'm definitely about that. Something about her book when I went into Practical Magic was I was not expecting it to be more chick lit. But now that I know that's kind of the way that she writes, I feel like I could definitely get into this one. Again, it's super short, looks super autumnal, so I'm hoping that I love this one more than Practical Magic. Okay, my next stack here is Mystery Thrillers. It's probably the biggest stack that I have here. Clearly, I was in a mood when I got all of these books, but the first one I am actually pretty nervous about but I've also heard great things, is The Quiet Tenet. I even read the first page while I was in Barnes & Noble, and this might be a little too dark for me, but I've also had people tell me that it's really worth the read. A pulse-pounding psychological thriller about a serial killer narrated by those closest to him. His 13-year-old daughter, his girlfriend, and the one victim he has spared. But yeah, I'm hoping to give this one a try. I'm a little bit skeptical and definitely scared, but I've heard great things. But on a lighter note I have the bandit queens which sounds super fun the inside is definitely giving me Finley Donovan vibes and I've heard great things about this it just says she didn't kill her husband but why not let everyone believe she did this just makes me think of Finley Donovan killers of a certain age you know just that fun kind of cozy mystery that's really humorous so I'm hoping this has the vibes that I'm looking for I also picked up Simone St. James older book that I believe was rebranded called Silence for the Dead. I guess there is this giant grand estate where there's a bunch of soldiers that were housed during the Great War and then you jump into the present day and there's a bunch of like haunting and like creepy things going on. I don't know anything other than that but like I said earlier I love a good haunted house vibe and I really love the way Simone St. James writes so I think I could really get into this one. Next I have one of my most anticipated releases is I'm Not Done With You Yet by Jesse Q. Sutton. This is the author's first like adult actual thriller which I'm very intrigued by because typically she writes more humorous things. It sounds good for bookish people and it also has like this weird kind of obsessive friendship that reminds me of Killing Eve. I'm definitely interested for sure to see if she can pull off a book like this. Next I have Alice Feeney's Good Bad Girl which if you've watched my latest fall vlog you know that I did read this one and I decided to give it four stars. It's not Alice Feeney typical psychological thriller. It's actually more relationship based so it's definitely a little bit more domestic thrillery than it is like her typical twisty book. There's definitely a good twist that I did not see coming but that did not take away from the enjoyment of this book. But going into this just know it's not going to be your super fast-paced psychological book but if you're a huge Alice Feeney fan like I am I think you're still going to enjoy this one. Next I have The Mary Shelley Club which I have been dying to read year after year. I don't know why it's taken me so long to pick this one up. I guess it just took me seeing this on the shelf at a discounted price to finally pull the trigger. I love Frankenstein. I love Mary Shelley but the only thing I do know about this one is it has to do with a group of high school students I think that have the Mary Shelley club where they have like these weird kind of like competitions and they also really love pulling pranks so one night a prank goes wrong. I don't know what happens from there. I don't even really know why it's called the Mary Shelley Club, but I'm very intrigued to find out. Next, I have a book by Caitlin Starling called Last to Leave the Room. I think this is out in stores by now. Oh no, it's not.
not. It says it's coming out in October. I actually really enjoyed The Death of Jane Lawrence written by this author. I know a lot of people didn't, but it had all those subtle, creepy, but gothic vibes that I wanted. But this one I do know is speculative horror, so we're definitely going to get a different vibe here. As Tamsin grows obsessed with the distorting dimensions of the room at the bottom of the stairs, she finds a door that didn't exist before, and one night it opens to reveal an exact physical copy of her. It appears fully terribly human, passing every test Tamsin can devise. But the longer the double exists, the more Tamsin begins to forget pieces of her life. I mean, can you imagine finding an exact replica of yourself? Like, what in the world? That's just so crazy. So I'm definitely interested to see where this one goes. It definitely sounds like a Black Mirror episode or something that could be turned into one of those episodes. I'm definitely on board with this because I'm excited to see where this one goes. The next book I'm a little bit skeptical about, but I'm gonna give it a try because my friend Rachel keeps telling me this could potentially be a Ruth Ware book for me. That is The It Girl. I know nothing about it. I kind of haven't read a Ruth Ware book in a really long time. This just follows a woman who is on the hunt for her friend's murderer. I know there's Dark Academia vibes, but if it's Dark Academia, I could get on board with it. So we will see how it goes. Next, I have one of the most gorgeous covers I've ever seen. That is Murder Your Employer, The McMaster's Guide to Homicide by Rupert Holmes. Prepare yourself for an education you'll never forget. A delightful mix of witty wordplay, breathtaking twists, and genuine intrigue, Murder Your Employer will gain you admission into a wholly original world, cocooned within the most entertaining book about well-intentioned would-be murderers you'll ever read. And look at this map. There's such an intricate map on this inside. It almost sounds like maybe like an Agatha Christie-ish type of writing. It sounds cozy. It sounds good. We'll just see what happens. The next one is definitely a cover buy for me or one that keeps coming to my attention because of the cover. My friend Elizabeth gave this to me, but it's The Enigma of Room 622. A burnt out writer's retreat at a fancy Swiss hotel is interrupted by a murder mystery in this metafictional, meticulously crafted who done it? Sounds like it's going to be witty and fun. Sounds like it's going to be another one of those kind of cozy mysteries with some great humor. So I'm willing to give this one a try. Next, I picked up The House in the Pines by Anna Reyes. This cover really intrigues me. It says a shocking debut thriller about the subtlety of memory and manipulation in which a young woman must find her way back to a New England cabin, armed with only hazy, haunting memories to finally uncover the truth that could save her. Sounds kind of spooky. I love the forest vibes. I've heard great things and I'm always on the hunt for a new great thriller. This next book called Curious Beginning. I have seen around for years. I think the final installment just came out. I feel like it's a pretty big series. I seriously have no idea what to expect from this other than I have this feeling I'm going to give it five stars. It's historical fiction. It's mystery. If anyone tells me mystery, I'm probably going to pick it up. So I am trying trusting the masses on this one in hopes that it's going to be just as good as everyone says. Next, I have The Appeal, which isn't exactly like a fall book, but I do love reading mysteries around this time of year. And this one looks very unique because it has all emails and texts and a bunch of different type of mixed media in here. The Fairway Players, a local theater group, is in the midst of rehearsals when tragedy strikes the family of director Martin Haywood and his wife. Their young granddaughter has been diagnosed with a rare form of cancer and with an experimental treatment costing a tremendous sum, their castmates rally to raise the money to give her a chance at survival. But not everyone is convinced of the experimental treatment's efficacy, nor of the good intentions of those involved. So it sounds like a very unique premise. I don't know what in the world, how like you're supposed to figure out a mystery from emails and texts and letters, but we are going to find out. Okay, these next couple books are spooky middle grade, which I am very very excited for because I feel like it is a genre that I could easily love if I would just read more of it. The first one I picked up that obviously looks very fall is The Bellwoods Game. At that moment, as if in answer to Madison's words, a bell tolled from somewhere deep in the woods. A fresh wave of goosebumps cascaded down Bailey's arms. The words from her journal rang in her head over and over again. Bad omen, bad omen, bad omen. No idea what that means. There's just all these kids running 
away from something. I guess this like big green eyed monster. I've also never heard this author before. So we are definitely taking a little bit of a gamble on this one, but it does sound super good. I also have Amari and the Night Brothers, which I've seen a lot of people talk about year after year. I think this girl's like a ghost hunter. She's looking for her brother, but I have heard nothing but amazing reviews from this book. I feel like because it's more of the popular spooky middle grade, this will be a really good place to start. I also have three Lindsay Curry books that I've accumulated recently. I read The Girl in White, absolutely loved it. I feel like she could easily be someone that I just binge. I have The Peculiar Incident on Shady Street, Scritch Scratch, and then her newest It Found Us. The Peculiar Incident on Shady Street takes place in Chicago. I think this girl and her family moved there. It's more of like a haunted house theme, which you know is my vibe. We also have Scritch Scratch, whose main character's dad, he gives haunted ghost tours of Chicago on this bus. I'm from Chicago. I feel like I'm gonna love this one. And then It Found Us is her newest book and I have no idea what it's about. It just says a spooky new mystery about a girl detective who must decode a series of ominous clues tied to a century old tragedy in order to find a missing teenager before it's too late. It looks like we're in a graveyard here, but this person or this kid on the front without eyes is really creeping me out. I have no idea what these elephants are doing on the cover, but honestly, I cannot wait to find out. I've also picked up a couple cozy mysteries. You guys know me. I love cozy mysteries, especially this time of year. I think I've talked about both of these in another video, maybe a TBR at some point. So I'm just going to mention them together, but I have Murder at the Pumpkin Pageant, and I also have a Trip with Trouble. This is, I think, the first in a series. I started it. I'm 50 pages in. I'm loving it so much. I decided to keep it for October, actually. It's giving major Gilmore Girls vibes, but even in just the first couple chapters, they're talking about apple cider donuts and pumpkin carving and like haunted houses. Basically, any type of fall thing you can think about was already in this book. I mean, apple bobbing, you name it. So I definitely want to hold off to read this a little bit closer to Halloween, I think. But this one was a little bit of a cover buy for me. I do own the first one, but this one is called A Trip with Trouble. It takes place in the Blue Ridge Mountains at this hotel lodge place where there are yoga classes and things happening. Like I said, I haven't read the first one, but the second one just looks so fall to me. I had to get it because of the cover, but I also live really close to the Blue Ridge Mountains, so I think this one's just gonna be a complete vibe. I also recently hauled A Witch to Remember by Heather Blake. I read At the Coffee Shop of Curiosities by Heather Weber, which is the same author, and I didn't love that one, so everyone was telling me to check out this series instead. It takes place at a wedding, things go wrong, there's a psychic, I don't know what else happens. Honestly, this is not my favorite favorite cover, but I'm willing to give it a shot and there's witchy vibes in it. I guess there's a witch in this or maybe the bride is a witch, but I'm going to trust my patrons on this one because they usually know what's up. Last but not least, the one and only graphic novel, which kind of surprises me that I've picked up lately because I love graphic novels this time of year. I decided to pick up Little Witches, Magic and Concord. This is basically Little Women but they're witches. I don't know what in the world that means or what the plot of it is gonna be. The artwork looks pretty promising. I picked this up at Powell's when I was on my trip in Washington, so I am gonna be reading this with some friends who also picked up a copy. I feel like this could definitely have the potential to be a new favorite. Well, my friends, that is it for my big giant fall book haul. Like I said, I've been collecting books since July, waiting to do this haul, waiting to gather and collect a bunch of books that I can read this season and going into the years to come obviously because there's no way I'm gonna read all these in the next couple months. Honestly I didn't even count the number but it just makes me so happy to be surrounded by fall books, fill my TBR cart, and just read some fall books all season long. I hope you got some more new recommendations out of this video. If you've read any of these and I should bump them up on my TBR list, you guys know tell me because I definitely will. But thank you so much for clicking on this video, watching, supporting my channel. I love you guys so much and I will see you in my next fall video.